Well, I guess it's about that time for another updated 2015 NFL mock draft. This will be a two-round edition, and both rounds will be down in the description box down below. Now, the regular season is almost at an end, so the order of the draft, in particular the top 20 picks and especially the top 12 to 13 picks, are really starting to take shape in terms of where teams might expect themselves to be. But in the past next couple of weeks, there's still a chance to see some movement up and down the draft order. So this is a critical time for many teams, especially those teams that aren't making the playoffs, because that draft position does matter. But I think it depends on the team, the organization, and the circumstance as to whether those teams want to lose their last two games and potentially have a better place on the board, or if it's worth trying to win those last two games to get a worse place on the board, but to build for the future off of those last two wins. Uh, you look at the Tampa Bay Buccaneers at this point in time, they would have the number one overall pick. They need to do everything they can to lose those last two games. They need to be in that position of having the number one overall pick because in that particular case, it allows them flexibility, allows them options, and if they determine that a Mariota or a Winston can be a franchise quarterback, then that's the guy that they need to go after. And the best way to assure yourself of being able to do that is by obtaining the number one pick. So the Bucks need to suck it out, if you know what I mean. Same thing for the Tennessee Titans. I know they're playing the Jags on Thursday night, and it's a winnable game for them. Same thing as a winnable game for the Jaguars. But their organization's in two different positions right now. The Jaguars already took their quarterback in Blake Bortles. So whether he's the answer or not long-term is going to be determined eventually. But in the meantime, you know that for the moment, he's the guy that you're building the team around. You already have that guy in place. Getting the number one pick if you're the Jaguars isn't necessarily the best thing in the world. Getting a win or two to close out the season and giving Blake Bortles some confidence and building some positive momentum heading into 2015 is important. So if the Jaguars were to find a way to win over the Titans and then maybe even win their last game or even just the win over the Titans and it cost them a top three pick, that's okay. That's okay because in this case, it's better off for that organization long term, whereas the Titans need to lose their last two games. They have no identity. They have nobody at quarterback. They really don't have much of anything at all, frankly. The Titans need to make sure <clears throat> that they're no worse than number two on the draft board. Because if they determine both Mariota and Winston can be franchise quarterbacks, that would be the only way they could guarantee themselves the option of being able to draft one of those guys. Now, that also would create a situation where if a team wanted to move up desperately for one of those two guys, the Titans at number two could be in a position where they could peel back and get some additional picks, which is also something they desperately need. So the Jaguars need to win. Frankly, the Titans need to lose. The Raiders are at this point in time. You know, you could lose out, and that wouldn't be a bad thing for the organization. You could win one of your last two games, and I don't think that's that detrimental to the organization because the Raiders are so bad, and if they're going to try and build around Derek Carr, then quarterback isn't the priority. Then they'll be able to find some help somewhere, picking somewhere in the top ten, offense or defense. I would think it should be on the offensive side of the ball if you're going to build around Derek Carr. But in this mock, let's say I've got them taking Leonard Williams number four out of USC. If they bring in a new coach, maybe a Harbaugh, who wants to implement a 3-4 defense, you need that guy like a Leonard Williams, who you might envision as a J.J. Watt type. So in the Raiders' case, they probably want to lose the last two, but if they win one of the last two, it's not the worst thing in the world. For the Redskins, right now they'd be picking number five. They need to win one or two of these last games uh, for the standpoint of establishing um, some confidence and momentum for RG3 heading into 2015. On the flip side of that, they maybe need to lose these last two games so they can get Jay Gruden the fuck out of there. This is really a, a, a conflicting time, I think, for the Redskins organization. Lose the last two, Gruden's fired, but maybe RG3 is ruined. On the flip side, win those last two games, RG3 may be saved, but that unfortunately might save Jay Gruden's job as well. You know, it's, it's kind of a a 50-50 proposition where either way they still lose. Um, the bottom line is when you look at the Redskins, after a couple of years of not having first-round picks, they'll need to make sure no matter what that they hit it and hit it big with their first-round pick this year. You know, They might be a team that looks to try and trade back and accumulate additional picks, which isn't a bad idea. But even with that being said, if they did stay there, like I've got them taking Amari Cooper, look. And I'm going to talk about this when it comes to the Bears and certain other teams as well. When you suck, you suck. 
You can sit there and say, well, they got this, and they got that, and they got this. If you're sitting there at 3-11, and 11, you ain't got shit. Just about everything is replaceable. Just about everybody is expendable. Just about anybody you could draft, if you deem them as the best player on the board at a certain position, will be an upgrade over what you have on the fucking roster. And you look at the Redskins, if you're going to go with RG3 again, you need to give them more help. It either needs to come in the form of offensive line help and or help at the wide receiver position in terms of a true number one wide receiver. You might say, well, they've got Deshaun Jackson, they've got Pierre Garçon. They've got a lot of receivers that play a very similar style. They need somebody like an Amari Cooper type, somebody that will bring something a little bit different to the table while still being another explosive threat outside. And frankly, is there a law against having as much talent at wide receiver as humanly possible? No, I don't think so. So when you're the Redskins, you just need to draft something preferably on the offensive side of the ball. And then we get to the Chicago Bears, my guys. And obviously this has not been a good season. I told you it wasn't going to be beforehand. Well, you look at this team now, and you clearly have established that Cutler's not the answer. Trustman's probably gone. The entire coaching staff probably gone. The general manager might be gone. Hell, the team president might be gone. It's gotten that bad. And you hear people talk about they have all this talent on offense. They have all this talent on offense that the defense is a problem. Yeah, the defense is a problem. It's terrible. They suck. They're going to continue to suck for a couple of years. But we need to cut this talent bullshit out. Because you can sit there and talk about how big they are, how fast they are, how strong they are. If they can't fucking play, they can't fucking play. And when you look at the Bears, the production of the offense in 2014 clearly indicates that there's not nearly as much talent on that side of the ball as people think there is. That is a very overrated uh, talent base on that offensive side of the ball. The Bears are terrible. They need to engage in a full and complete, total top-down rebuild of the organization. And the way that comes is via a new team president, new general manager, new head coach, and a new fucking quarterback. Automatically just saying that the Bears need to draft defense, defense, defense again, well, primarily with the early picks for the past several years that I've referenced before, they have done exactly that, and their defense still sucks. All the while, their offense is overpaid, overaged, and overrated, and overhyped, and underproducing. You have to start over everywhere. It is that bad, and it's going to get worse before it gets better. So for me, when I look at the Bears maybe taking a Connor Cook in the first round and a Cameron Irving in the second round to play center, that's a necessary thing. Sitting there and just automatically locking them in to take a defense, defense is stupid. Because it still doesn't address the problem on the offensive side of the ball. And believe me, there's a problem on the offensive side of the ball. The Bears are 5-9. and nine. Their so-called lead offense hasn't scored 30 points once this season. And far too often, they've went into the second half of games uh, with zero points on the board. And they only start to do something in the fourth quarter after they're down by more than three fucking touchdowns. Don't just assume that defense is the need because it's not. Not at all. It is a need. It is a big problem. But so is the fucking offense. Now, other players that stand out to me in terms of uh, guys that you need to watch and where they go. Like Detroit, I've got them taking Melvin Gordon. I know a lot of mocks are probably going to have them taking a defensive tackle with Sue's free agency fairly not really working out. I understand that. But you also look at that offense and you look what happens when a Bush goes out. They, they get limited production out of Jack Bell. They need an impact every down back. This is still an organization that you are building on the offensive side of the ball. You're building it around Matthew Stafford. You have to get somebody that could be that dynamic three down back, and that's what Melvin Gordon can be. And then you look at Todd Gurley. He's a huge injury risk. He's coming off of a torn ACL. He's had durability problems in the past, but, man, when he's on, he's really on. And for a team like Arizona picking at the bottom of round number one, he makes tremendous sense as a gamble because the Arizona Cardinals, besides the fact that they don't have a quarterback, they don't have a running game. This is a team that cannot run the ball. And with this being as good as they are on defense – if they had a better running game, even with mediocre to average quarterback play, they'd be a team you could take much more seriously as a potential Super Bowl contender. Whereas right now, at 11-3, and three, nobody is viewing them as a Super Bowl contender because they don't have a quarterback and they don't have a running game. Well, a Todd Gurley would potentially fix that lack of a running game. Um, in terms of other players that stand out in terms of their movement, maybe up the board, I look at Quentin Rollins, the corner from Miami of Ohio. He's got size. He's got that small school appeal. Somebody's going to really like him, I think, and that might move him up into the first round. 
I think somebody like a Malcolm Brown, the defensive tackle from Texas, has the ability because of positional versatility, maybe being able to play the nose in a 3-4 or a 4-3 or being able to play end in a 3-4 is going to move up the board as well. Ronnie Stanley, the offensive tackle from Notre Dame, I think is going to move tremendously up the board, as might a TJ Clemens, as I've referenced before, out of Pittsburgh. Um, in terms of players that I think are going to drop a little bit as the process goes along, I think you've got to go with Landon Collins. The recent lack of success of Alabama defensive backs, combined with the fact that maybe Landon Collins himself projects more as a strong safety in the box type than a center fielding free safety at the NFL level, you might see his draft stock drop a little bit. And what I mean is going from a top 7 to 10 pick to maybe going somewhere between 15 to 20, which is where I have him going 16 uh, to Miami. Other guys that I think will drop, I think Obehi drops quite a bit. I think Randy Gregory drops if he declares. You know, these are kind of predictions. I've got DeForest Buckner, the defensive end from Oregon, finding his way into the first round. And again, it's kind of fluid. You know, and I acknowledge even here in December, you know, there's all these players I've watched to some degree, but I still have a lot more to watch and a lot more to evaluate before I start locking in the positions. Again, these are about scenarios and this and that. But check it out, my two-round mock draft down below, and let me know what you think. I'll be back with another one next week.